In this video, we're going to go over what are events in C-sharp, how they work and how they're used. We're going to see the benefits of events and how they are essential to keeping your code nice and clean. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in-depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so if you've seen a bunch of my videos, you've probably heard me mention two things. One, I always highlight the importance of writing clean code, and two, I use events to decouple various systems and keep my code clean. If you want to write good quality code, you need to learn and use events. The good thing is they are actually very easy. So events are just a way of saying something happened without knowing or caring about who is listening, if anyone. You have publishers and subscribers. The publisher has its event and the subscribers can subscribe to that event. Multiple subscribers can subscribe to the same event. Then when something happens, the publisher fires off the event and all the subscribers get notified that the event was fired. The key thing is that the publisher does not know who the subscribers are. So there might be lots of them or there might be none. They might process the event or completely ignore it. The publisher doesn't know and doesn't care who is listening and what they did with that information. So this allows you to write code in the publisher that is decoupled from whatever other code you also want to run that isn't essential. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. One way you've seen me use events a lot is to keep the logic and visual separate. Normally, you don't want your logic code to be tightly coupled with the visual. You want the logic to work on its own regardless of whether or not there's a visual component. The visual should just display what is happening inside the logic. So to keep those separate, the logic class fires off events, which may or may not be caught by a class that handles the visuals. For example, I made the level system quite a long time ago, and as always implemented the logic and events and connected that test visual to those events. And recently I made a video on a skill tree and I used the exact same level system class. The difference is only in the visual. On the level system, I had a dummy character, some buttons and a bar, and on the skill tree, I have a moving player and an experience bar with a level counter. Since I used events, I didn't have to modify any of the code inside the level system because I used the same logic and only changed the visuals. So using events allowed me to very easily reuse that class in a completely different project. All right, let's look at some code. So over here, I have my basic script. Now, the way you define an event is very simple. First you define the accessor, so in this case let's make it public, and then you use the event keyword, so this is how you define that this field is going to be an event, then we need to know the type, and now the standard type for events as used in the .NET standard is the event handler, which is inside using system. Now event handler, as you can see, it's just a simple delegate with two fields. We have an object for the sender and the event args, which we'll cover in a bit. So we define the type and then we just pass in the name. So in this case, let's call it on space press. Normally, you also name it starting with on and then whatever it represents. So on space pressed, on enemy killed, on player win, and so on. So here we have defined our event. Now let's see how we can trigger and how to subscribe to it. First, let's do the trigger. So in here, let's make our update function. And let's test for the spacebar being down. And when we press the spacebar, let's fire off our event. So to do that, we call our event as if it were a function. So on space press, and we just call it. Now for the sender, let's just pass in this. And for the event args, since we don't have any extra information, we can use the constant event args dot empty. And that's it. So over here, we are firing off our event whenever we press the spacebar. So let's try it out. Okay, here we are, the game is running, here's the console and press space. And there you go, we have an error. We have a null reference exception. Now the reason is because right now we do not have any subscribers. So the underlying structure for our event is set to null. So when we fire an event, we need to first test that the event is not null. So if on space press, if it is not null, then we actually do fire off our event. Now I can press the spacebar and there you go, we do not have an error. And since C sharp six, we can shorten this in order to use the null conditional operator. So we just do question mark and then call invoke. 
So this does the exact same thing. It invokes the event only if on space pressed is not null. And again, here I am and I'm pressing space and there you go, no errors. Awesome. So now that we have the event being fired, let's do something with it. Now, in order to subscribe to the event, first we define a function that will receive that event. Now the function signature needs to be the same as the event. So in this case, we're going to make a function that takes a object and a event args parameter. So here we have our function, which matches this signature. And when we have the event fire, let's do a simple debug log. Okay, now in order to subscribe, we access the event, so on space pressed, and we do plus equals, and we add our function. So this is how we add our function onto this event. So when this event is invoked, it will call the functions attached to that event, which in this case is this function. So when we press space, it's going to run this code and do a log. Let's see. So here we are, and now I press space, and there you go, we have our log. So our event is being fired when we press space, and it's being captured by that function, which then does a log. Okay, great. Now here we are triggering and listening to the event on the same class, but the benefits are when we listen from somewhere else. So let's do that. In the editor, let's make another script. And let's attach this script into the same game object, okay. And now in here, first we need to get a reference to our other script. So since they're on the same game object, we just do get component of our testing event script. And now with this reference, we can access our event on space pressed. And just like before, we do pause equals, and then we add our function. And now if you're using Visual Studio, you can use code completion to really speed this up. So over here, as you can see, I can press tab, and there you go, it automatically creates the function. And now here, let's do the same debug log. Okay, so that's it. Now back into the publisher script, and let's get rid of this one. So this script is only responsible for firing off the event. And then this script accesses that one and subscribes to that event. Let's see. Okay, so here we are. And now if I press space, and yep, there you go, we have our message. And if in here we remove the subscriber script, and I'll run again, and I press space, and there you go, we do not have any errors, and everything is still running exactly the same. So the publisher class does not require the subscriber to exist. All right, so here we have our example. We have this class, which fires off this event, and this class has absolutely no knowledge that this other class exists. So this one just fires off the event, whether someone is listening or not, which again, this is perfect for separating logic and visuals. You need the visuals to know about the logic, but you do not want the logic to know about the visuals. You want the logic to be able to work with or without the visuals. So you just have your logic firing off events, and your visuals, if they exist, listening to those events. Now here we are subscribing to the event, but as you can imagine, we can also unsubscribe. So on start, let's subscribe, and then after receiving the event once, let's unsubscribe. So to unsubscribe, instead of plus equals, we do minus equals. So that's it, let's test. Okay, here we are, and let's press space. And there you go, we have the log function. But now press space again, and there you go, no more messages. So we unsubscribed, so we stop receiving the events. Now in here, we're using the event handler, which as you can see has two fields, an object and an event args. The event args is the standard way for passing more information through the event. So the way we do that is first we make a class that derives from event args. And now in here, we define whatever fields we want. So let's say we have an int for the space count. And now up here, when we define the event, we can use the generic version and pass in our specific event args as the generic parameter. So in this case, on space press event args. So now our event will contain an object of this type on the second parameter. So down here, you can already see the error. In here, we need to pass in of type on space press event args. So we do a new and we create our object. So just like that. So whenever we press space, we are incrementing this local field. Then we're firing off the event and constructing a on space pressed event args and passing in a specific parameter. And now we go back into our subscriber. 
And here we modify our signature to receive our new type. And now we can access that new type and we can get, for example, the space count. So just like this, we're passing extra data along with our event. Now let's see. So here we are and press space. And yep, there it is. We have our event being fired and passing along some extra data. Awesome. Now, another thing about events is you do not have to use event handler. This is just the normal .NET standard. Events work with delegates and event handler is simply the standard delegate. So here we can define our own delegate. So here we define a delegate, it returns void and takes a parameter for a float. Now, if you're not familiar with delegates, they are essentially function signatures. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video dedicated just to delegates. Now we can make an event of this type. So again, we pass in the event keyword and then our specific delegate type. And we can fire off very much in the same way. So we call invoke. And in this case, we take a float parameter. Okay, so we have our event being fired. And now back in the subscriber, in here, let's subscribe to our new event. So on float event plus equals, press tab, and there you go, there's our automatic event, which as you can see, takes a float parameter. And just like that. All right, so let's test. Okay, so here we are and press space. And there you go, we have our event being fired along with a float parameter. And again, if we're working with delegates, then we can also use the default delegate called action. So we make a public event and we can use the type action. So action, as you can see, is just a delegate that returns void. And action also has a generic version. So you can define it with a bunch of different types. So in this case, let's define an action that takes a Boolean and an integer. And then down here, we fire off the event, just like we do every time. So there it is, we have our event working with an action that takes a boolean and an int. And then here we subscribe the same way. And let's test. And here we are, and yep, we have all of our events working. So you can see how you're not forced to work event handler. You can use whatever delegate you want. Personally, I like to stick with the standard, so use event handler, and then if I need extra info, I create an event args, but you can use whatever delegate you want. Now, another thing specific to Unity are Unity events. These work pretty much the same way, with difference being that they are shown in the editor. So in here, we make a public of type Unity event, and Unity event is inside Unity engine.events. So here we have our unity event. Then we invoke it exactly the same way. So we call dot invoke. In this case, we have no parameters. And also note how this does not have the event keyword. And now if we go back into the editor, with our object selected, you can see over here in the inspector, we have a field for our unity event. So we can click the plus icon and in here select an object. So let's select this same object. And then we can select a function from that. So let's make a function to call. Here in our subscriber script, let's make it. So here we have a function with no parameters, returning void and it's public. And now back into the editor. Over here we can select that function, so click in here, then we go into our script, testing event subscriber, and down here we have our testing unity event function. So select it, and now let's test. So here we are and press space and yep, there you go, everything is working correctly. Here we have our testing Unity event being triggered. So the main benefit of Unity events are that you can easily set them in the editor. So if you're trying to make your game more friendly to designers, this may be a good tool. All right, so here we looked at how events work, how they're used and what are the main benefits. As you saw, events are excellent for helping you keep your code nice and organized. It allows objects to work with other objects without being tightly coupled. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. 
Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll see you next time.